Hello viewers, Ghana Property Awards is 15 years this year and as part of our celebration we're going around to visit some of the award winners to interact with them and know what has been their success stories. We are here at the offices of ARG One Africa to talk to Mr. Ronnie Matuk about what has been the success story and uh, before I go on, when you take a ride through the city of Accra, you come across some high-rise buildings uh, such as uh, Car Bank Corporate Offices, uh, the City House, uh, Villagio Vista Apartments, and these edifices have been equipped with high-quality elevators by Tyson Crop. And the brief behind us is Mr. Matuk, founder and CEO of ARG1 Africa. Hello, Mr. Matuk. Thank you, sir. How are you doing, sir? You. We're all fine, thank you. Good, good, good. Ah. Mr. Matuk, technology has brought solutions and created innovations with creative application of scientific principles, aiding design or developed structures, machines, escalators, or manufacturing processes assisted by A1 to speed project design in meeting the needs and trends of people and businesses. Elevators, escalators, and airport solutions are your products. In today's interview, we'll be discussing issues on technology innovation and creative engineering that ARG1 Africa has brought to bear in Ghana's property and Africa property market. Ghana Property Awards, as I said earlier, is 15 years old. We will also delve into what you have done best for the industry for the past decade and what customers should expect from ARG Africa in the next decade. What changes you want Ghana Property Awards effect? Now, tell us about ARG One Africa. You're welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations to your establishment Thank for you. the 15 years. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Roni Gabi Matuk. Um, born and bred in Ghana, schooled in Christ the King, Achimota, Legon, and eventually went to specialize overseas. I was actually the only Obroni in Achimota school. <laughs> <laughs> One of the, at that okay. time. Okay, okay. We're talking, I think, 94, 95, maybe, plus or minus. Okay. Um, my family has been here for four generations. So you are we, basically Ghanaian? Yes. Yeah. My father and mother were born in Kumasi Okay. during the timber days. They actually started with a bakery. They used to do bread. Okay, okay. Then eventually with time, they went into construction. So my father is the, my late father is the founder of Paraku Estates. Paraku Estates in Accra here? Yes. Right, okay. And Kutam Construction. Mm. So part of the family is the Paloma group as well. Okay, you know, Paloma. Okay, okay, okay. So we grew up in the field of construction and civil works so that helped us uh, a bit so uh, ARG one I opened the company in 2010 right. and uh, the idea was to try and understand what some challenges the construction industry has mm -hmm. and how can we use technology and external knowledge bring it to Ghana and help the challenges in the construction industry one of the items was the elevator. Okay. Because during my experience with the family business, one of our challenges when we used to build was elevators. Okay. And we were exposed to that. We even worked with some suppliers and we learned a little and we I understood the challenges, the pros and the cons. And uh, we actually even executed some projects, mm. but not as an elevator company. Mm. The owners of the projects came back two years later to say that we need to do some repair works. Okay. In this instance, we're referring to the Trasaco Group, <coughs> the chairman of the Trasaco Group. Okay. Um, so we went, we solved the problems, and we understood that this is a machine that you can't just buy off a shelf, install, mm, right. and let go. It requires a life term after sale service. Okay. So that was what opened up the idea that it's interesting being born and bred and understanding the culture and we're here to stay. Okay. 
it will be interesting to go into a long-term specialized okay. service. Okay. And so that was the birth of ARG1. We opened the company to offer the service to fix elevators and escalators. So how long have you been operating? So we're now 13 years old. 13 years old, that's so great. We started off with just me and uh, two employees and my mother because it was a, a small startup. Okay. We decided to do it without the support of the family mm. uh, to try and achieve something with what they have taught us. Okay. So we didn't acquire any funding or any investments or any shareholders. Mm. It was merely a walk to Retra General. Company was set up, plastic table and four chairs. Oh, that's that it. was the birth. Yes. Mm. And um, being blessed with a good family name, our first customer was Tosako himself. Okay. And the second customer was Mr. Ajay of Casapreco. Okay, 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 okay. Both of them being household successful names. Mm. And we being blessed with a good name in the industry, they gave us the opportunity and told us to make sure we do the right to see job. What you can do, right. Yes. So we did, we did excel, we found the right product, imported it, found the right technicians to employ, installed it, maintained it well. And that was the launch pad of ARG. So right now, uh, what is your staff strength and the, the technical right aspect now, of it? To start off with two, we're now at 300. Wonderful. 300. Wonderful. We we're averaging, our first year was maybe seven elevators only. Now we average around 100 elevators. And in the Ghanaian market, in the city, um, it is an interesting uh, statistic. Um, and we are proud to say that uh, we have successfully done so with zero fatalities. Wow. You know, it's a high That's risk great. job. Yes, it's a high risk job. And you're inside a hole in a building. And something will happen. And, and something will happen. And you know our brothers, yes. sometimes they don't manage the safety uh -huh. as much as you wish for them mm -hmm. to. So with some internal procedures and some small uh, attitude towards them that if you don't do this, we'll penalize you here, we'll shake you here. Right. And God, luckily, no fatalities. So we're lucky. We're blessed. Good to know. Good we're to blessed. know. Uh, I wanted to ask you, when was your, what was the reception when you first entered Ghana? But I got to know from the beginning that you were born and bred here. And uh, how has the family been like? I mean, uh, your mom is still there? Your My mom, mother, Marian. still uh, comes to work every day at 8 o'clock. Wonderful. She's the mother of the company. Okay. So she makes sure that things are clean, the place is healthy, the environment is good, and the stress levels are managed. managed. So that Absolutely. is the motherly role that she plays. And we took it a point that we couldn't afford to set up a right place. This where you are now is actually a warehouse. So we started off in the front, which was just a balcony, a mm. table and four chairs. Okay. And then this was a small storeroom. Okay. So when we were began to secure some small work, we transformed the storeroom to my office. So this was my office. Okay. And then slowly, slowly started to go deeper, deeper. So we now have office space of around 400 meters square. And six, seven years ago, we decided to invest in the comfort of the office. Because for me, um, I believe that we spend more time at work than we spend even at home. So you need to get a good working environment. So everybody has to be comfortable. Okay. ARG is a family. Okay. I am personally involved with everybody. I still don't have a driver. I drive myself. Mm. I don't have a secretary. I believe Secretary in, yourself. <laughs> we believe in horizontal management. Okay. To try and change how things are done culturally mm. in the business environment of Ghana. And it's proven to give us more rewards than failures. It's more stressful, more painful. Because when you take things personal, it hurts when something doesn't go right. Well. Especially when you are personally involved with 300 staff. I know them by their names, I know where they live. I know their parents, their happiness, their sadness, their problems, their illnesses. So if somebody does something unethical, it hurts. And we still do have that challenge here in Ghana. Mm. A small percentage of 
employees sometimes do things that they're not supposed to do. So you try but we to manage it. Try to keep them in like a family. All exactly. of you, right. Now, what are some of the projects that you've undertaken so far in the country? Hmm. We've successfully completed over 700 projects, the largest of which being the Kotoka Airport. Kotoka Airport is officially the busiest building in Ghana in terms of people traffic. Right. It, it receives approximately 5,000 people per day. We always right. measure human traffic to the equipment that we install. Okay. Because the equipment's job is to help this human traffic move. Mm -hmm. In the same manner, cars help people move. In the mm -hmm. same manner, the road network. Okay. In this instance, we are the car and the road at the same time. Okay. The road being the design mm -hmm. of how big the road should be, so how right. big the elevator should be, right. and the speed of the elevator, and the technology in the elevator. Okay. You know, cars have drivers. Okay. Elevators do not. Don't have drivers, yes. So elevators are run by artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So it ha it's, has more sensors. The cars will get there eventually. Right. So it's a bit more complicated. So it's mechanical, electrical, computer software. And it being a new thing in Ghana, it wasn't easy to acquire employees. So we had to import specialized employees, okay. put them in groups with Ghanaians, and hopefully over time they begin they to begin learn. learn from them. So approximately 2% of our staff are expatriates, specialist expatriates. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. That play so. quality control, on-the-job training to mm. our Ghanaians. Projects, the International Airport, if you pick the top 10 tallest buildings in Ghana, nine of them are us, SU Towers, that is in your magazine. Yeah, SU, yes. Standard Chartered Bank, Ghana Commercial Bank, Bank of Ghana, CD Carl House, Bank. Carl Bank, mm. Fidelity Bank, mm. Absa Bank. All of them. We are blessed. All of them. <laughs> we are blessed. That's good work. Thank you. In terms of uh, residential, most of the residential projects, we wish to believe we are over 50% of the market and um, many more. Now, do you have competitors? How do you deal with them? <clears throat> The question is, what is competition? Yes. That is the question. Mm. For us, if there was policy in Ghana, possibly even us would not be qualified to run an elevator business. Unfortunately, there is an absence of policy in Ghana. In advanced markets, you can't wake up and decide to open an elevator company. You have to have certain credentials. You have to acquire certain certifications. It's like somebody waking up and saying, I'm opening a hospital or practicing to be a doctor. So how we established ourselves um, was not the best of ways. There's very high risk. Yes. Why should somebody buy an elevator from us? Who is certifying us? Okay. We're installing a machine that's taking a human being up and down. Where's the assurance that the right thing is being installed? Right. So, Scientifically, because of the lack of policy, the regu regulation is quite vague. So because we knew that we didn't have anybody to police us, we decided to police ourselves. But how about the standards board? Are they not there They only came you? two years ago. Okay. They only came two years ago. So prior to that, I would sell you an elevator. We would install the elevator. And that's it? And that's it. That's it. So Ghana Standards Authority, we're happy they came on board. We're happy now they are a certifying legal arm. Mm. It's added value. But as you see, you have polyclinics, you have right. major hospitals, right. you have first aid centers. Mm -hmm. In construction, you have A1, D1, K1 category of contractors. Right. And depending on, you have banks, you have the main banks, tier one banks, tier yeah. two banks, tier yeah. three banks, microfinance. In the elevator industry, you also have that, but because of lack of policy, we don't have that segmentation in Ghana. So, if you want to look at capacity in terms of human resource, we don't have competition. The closest to us is maybe 10, 10 staff. At all? At all. In terms of stock of spare parts mm -hmm. we have a stock of close to 300,000 euros of spare parts in terms of uh, portfolio or let us rephrase experience mm. the closest to us is 100 projects we are at 700 
Mm. You know, like the aeroplane pilots, yep. how many hours you fly puts you at a certain at a level. Certain level yep. You're a good age, you're conducting an interview. Mm. I can't come out of school and be equal to your experience in terms right. of an interview. It's true. So am I your competitor? If the market says I am, it's unfair to you. So in terms of scientific competition, Ghana, in Ghana, we don't believe scientifically we have competition. In terms of product, in international product, there are six certified international brands that are on the market. But there are over 30 other brands in the market that don't fall under the category of top global brands. They're okay. They take you, they bring you. But you know, like with the cameras, you have the Canon. Yep. You have the uh, Lessico or something. You have three or four brands that have passed the test of time in terms of quality. And same thing you have with cars. You have Toyota, Mercedes, Peugeot. But you have other cars, Chinese right. that come. Mm -hmm. But they're not at the same level. level. So at our level, there are six competitive brands that are equal to our brands, they're the global brands. In terms of Ghanaian capacity, I don't think scientifically we have competition. And the more that policy grows, the more that the others will need to step up their game. We like competition, we want competition. But it you don't good. get in it. We call it unfair competition. <laughs> Somebody will come, he's registered a company, he's been doing the business for six months, and a customer will put me at the same level of a six-month-old elevator company in Ghana. We believe it's not right. There has to be a minimum requirement. So, for example, a five-year track record. Okay. Uh, how many elevators have you installed in your life? Mm -hmm. What are your credentials? So, at the Register General, those are the areas that policy should be put there. There, so that they can follow it. So that they can be followed, yes. But they are, we believe there are over 30 companies uh, that offer elevators in the Ghanaian market, each one at a different level. And what, what do you say have been uh, one of your biggest challenges uh, in this industry? Have you, have you faced any challenge at all? Number one We're is... We're about competition, but then challenge. Number one is HR. Okay. The Ghanaian culture in terms of accountability, in terms of knowing that this is a chance you should take. Mm -hmm. It's still a bit soft compared to your generation. Oh, the new generation, starting from the schools, is very flexible now. So our biggest challenge is HR. And that's why we've invested only in HR. We haven't changed our office. It's a lease. We haven't bought lands or big, big buildings. We've invested every penny into the people. Because that for us has been the biggest challenge and the biggest reward. Okay. And that is the focus we want to continue. Okay. We're going to stay in this place, we're happy. But this place doesn't add value to the customer. Oh, of course. It's the yes. people of that course. adds value. It's of the expertise, course, yes. the training, the workshop. So we're always employing, we're always training, we're always doing workshops to make sure that our team matures quickly, grows quickly in this industry, to be able to offer the best of service to the customers. In the market, the challenge has been what we so-call the pull-down syndrome. <laughs> it is real. It's, it's happening in your area as well. It is real. Mm, see. It is real. The pull-down syndrome is very real. Um, it's tough. You need, if you're going to set up a business, you need a few godfathers to be there to guide you, to show you the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. But the pull-down syndrome is real. But you always stay on, 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 the, on top of it, isn't it? So you far, 13 yes. years and counting. That's good. The third most difficult part is the banking sector. Mm. Um, we don't have access to affordable funding. Okay. So it becomes very, very difficult to manage your business in terms of cash flow. These are the top three, starting from HR to the Ghanaian pull-down syndrome, then to the bankers. The bankers. That's how I will generalize the challenges along the years. So, don't the bank see how good you are and uh, what uh, 
inputs you are putting into the Ghanaian market that they should assist you financially? Can they see it? The banking sector in Ghana was doing very well until recently. Mm. And when you have 60-70% of your investments into government bonds, why would you want to invest in a startup? Right. So you can't blame them. Okay. If I owned a bank, maybe I would have even done worse. Along the way, have banks helped us? Yes. Okay. I wouldn't use the word bank. I would use the word the captain. The bank has a manager okay. or a CEO okay. who is the captain of the ship. Okay. He does the right scientific decision to support, for example, us because we don't have the collateral, we don't have the track record when we first started, but they still gave us some support. Okay. But there had to be personal intervention. Okay. Without personal intervention, we would not have got that's right. that support. And that's why it is crucial in our business culture to have a good name, to have a good track record, to be kind to people, and to know a few strategic individuals that can help you cross certain bridges because they have so much experience, they have so much cloud, they can assist you to cross and certain you bridges. We them the godfathers. We turn them the godfathers. They, they help. Yeah. But in reality, it's very tough acquiring affordable funding. You won the best company engineering elevators of the year 2017 and best sustainable engineering company 2019 elevator how did you do it and how has this award impacted your business once again like we said we're very blessed um, I didn't do it my team did it the whole company good uh, from day one I was doing everything with the team alone not one percent of what I have achieved could have happened all the way from the security guy to the lady that keeps our office clean because if we're not healthy, <laughs> we fall sick, um, we will not be able to perform the next day. So it's, it's a huge teamwork. And, and the, the teamwork plus the hard work, plus when the team sees that the captain is a hands-on guy, uh, leads by example, psychologically, all of it adds up to give you results. And that's what I believe we've achieved those results. In reality, um, the market has received such awards positively, but it's a double-edged sword. Some part of the market receives it positively, another part of the market sees it as a, a reason to make this pull-down syndrome become a reality. To the extent that they may actually tell you you have too much work we don't want to work with you. So it's... So that's not fair. It's not fair because we go back down to the issue of not enough policies. Right. Not enough policies. And it's not just about our business. It's any business. It's any institution in the world. If you don't have policies and a certain percentage of decision-making is personal or a certain percentage of securing work is personal, it does affect the growth of any economy in the world, in specific relations to startups and entrepreneurs. Right. Now, what are your expectations for this year's Ghana Property Awards? And what would you like to suggest to the organizers? First of all, we thank your institution very much. We appreciate the focus you put on us and the awards you share with us and the education. Um, what we would kindly suggest is possibly more of a meet and greet rather than a specific ceremonial function mm. because the meet and greet allows other individuals like myself to meet up I understand their challenges they understand my challenges and we're able to share ideas of successes and failures right. to learn from each other, each other rather than a purely ceremonial because ceremonial I may see you have received an award but I don't know who you are of course 
I don't know the steps that you climbed to receive that award. And I believe that an investment in the people is more rewarding than investment in a certificate or a ceremony. That's my humble suggestion. A nice one. I love that. Nice. Good. Now what motivates you and any other last words you'd like to add to this? What motivates me is knowing every day I can help somebody grow with knowledge. Maybe our line of work has exposed us to a lot of high net worth clients. And we've realized that happiness is, is, is within. You may have 10 million cities or 100 cities and you'll find that, that the happiness is nearly equal. So it's not just about the money, it's about growing people. And sadly, I have witnessed a number of uh, members of my family and friends that I have lost. And they took nothing with them. They only left their memories. Unfortunately, money is not a memory. Education is a memory. Helping somebody is a memory. So, of course, we want to work hard, we want to push, we want to be able to earn some income, but that is not the priority. The priority is sustainability and growth of people, not sustainability and growth of money. So, that's how I would end saying that's why we're doing this business. And uh, we have been um, exposed to a lot of other opportunities. Some of them we tried. But we realize that if we get back on track and we stick to one and we focus on this sustainability that can give generations of employment and growth, that to us is more successful and that's our agenda. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you so much. So I like a bit about you taking care of your staff because you take them as your family and uh, you spoke about HR. I like that bit about it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Viewers, you heard me talking to Mr. Matuk. He's been in the country, born and bred here. And you've heard all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.